Kia ora, I'm Nikki Wikota, and this is episode 8 of AI. In this episode, we'll be attaching a sensor to the agent. The agent will receive information about objects that enter the sensor's field of view and can use this information to make decisions. For example, when the player enters the sensor's range here, the AI decides to start attacking the player. Obstructions are also respected by the sensor to prevent the AI from being able to see through walls. Cool, let's get into it. I'd like to say a massive thank you to all the Patreons supporting this channel. This channel would definitely not be where it is today without you guys, so thank you very much. If you're interested in the project files used to create these videos, then please head over to Patreon from the link in the description below. So just before we get started, I want to go over the shape that we're going to be creating for the sensor. It's basically a wedge where we can control the distance, the angle, and also the height. So the wedge itself has pretty much got six points of interest. At the bottom center, the top center, the bottom left and top left relative to the agent, and the bottom right and top right relative to the agent. The mesh itself is created of five sides, the top side and the bottom side, which both have one triangle, the left and right sides, which both have two triangles, and the far side, which for now you can just think of as a flat side, which also has two triangles. And later on, we will subdivide it to give it this curved shape here. Start by creating a new script called AI Sensor and attach that to the agent and create four new public properties, one for the distance, angle, height, and a color to draw the sensor. Now we need to create a mesh to represent our sensor. So just uh, create a private property and create a new function called create wedge mesh, which is gonna do the bulk of the work here. So we just uh, instance create a new mesh here and return that. Now the number of triangles uh, to start with is just gonna be eight. The number of vertices, each triangle has three vertices, so we can just multiply the number of triangles by three. Now we need to allocate an array for our vertices using the number of vertices we just calculated above. And similarly, an array for the number of triangles, which is equal to the number of vertices because I'm ignoring indexing here. To build our triangles, it's easiest if we just define those six points I mentioned earlier. The bottom center is the origin of the wedge, which is zero, zero, zero. The bottom left, uh, we calculate by taking the forward axis of the agent and multiplying it by the sensor's distance. And then we rotate it to the left and the right around the y-axis using our angle parameter. The top center, top left and top right, they are just the same positions as the bottom center, bottom left and bottom right, except we shift them up by multiplying the up axis by the height of the sensor and adding that on to the corresponding bottom uh, point. We need to keep track of whereabouts we are in the vertices array, so we just create an integer here. The left side and the right side of the wedge are both going to have two triangles. The far side will also have two triangles. The top and the bottom sides, they'll only have one each. So it's about to get a little bit hairy. For the left side, we need to define two triangles. So the first triangle, let's start the bottom center, then move out to the bottom left, and then move up to the top left. For the second triangle, we continue starting at the top left, moving back towards the top center, and finally to make a loop back down to the bottom center. Similarly for the right hand side, we need to do the same except going in the opposite direction. So this time we start at the bottom center, go to the top center and out to the top right. For the second triangle, continuing from the top right down to the bottom right and then back towards the bottom center. Similarly for the far side, except this time we start from the bottom left, we go to the bottom right, go up to the top right for the first triangle, for the second triangle, we go from the top right over to the top left and down to the bottom left. The top and the bottom are a bit more simple because there's only one triangle. Uh, we just use the top vertices for the, uh, the top triangle and for the bottom, we use the bottom vertices, but in the opposite order. This is just to ensure the normals always point outwards from the center of the mesh. So the triangles array that we declared earlier, uh, this can be initialized really simply because there's no vertex sharing. Uh, we just loop over the number of vertices we have, which is also the same as the indices for the triangles and initialize it like that. Finally, we can assign the vertices and the triangles array to the mesh and call recalculate normals. Inside on validate, uh, I'm going to recreate the mesh each time. This is so if we change the angle or the uh, height or any of those parameters in the inspector, this, this function will get called. Now inside on draw gizmos, we set the color of the gizmos to the mesh color. And finally, we can draw the mesh at the agent's transform position and rotation. And voila, we have a mesh. 
I should have made this uh this yellow because it's like a wedge, like a piece of cheese. <laughs> um, you can also adjust the transparency of the mesh and the angle. And if you adjust the angle too much, it looks completely wrong. So let's fix that. We need to split the mesh into segments where each segment is kind of like a pizza slice and each segment has got four triangles, two for the far side and then one for the top and bottom each. The two and two there is just for the left and the right sides of the wedge. To calculate the sides of each segment, uh, we basically need two angles, the current angle, which is like the left side of the segment and the delta angle, which is the angle of the segment, which is calculated from the total angle of the wedge divided by the number of segments we have. We now loop over each of the segments, incrementing the current angle as we go. So for each segment, we want to redefine those bottom left and bottom right points we were using before. The bottom center and the top center don't change for each segment, so we can get rid of them. So the left is calculated from the current angle, and the right is calculated from the current angle plus the delta angle. Now finally, we just move our far side, top side, and bottom side definitions inside that loop. This has effectively subdivided our single wedge into multiple wedges to give us a nice curved edge and looks good at any angle. Awesome. So now it's time to do the bounds checking for the sensor and I'm gonna test this in edit mode. So I'm gonna add execute in edit mode here. Instead of updating the sensor each frame, I'm gonna add a scan frequency to control how frequently the sensor scans its environment. The layer mask just describes which layers that the sensor is interested in. The array of colliders is a buffer to store the results from our physics operation along with the count. The scan interval and the scan timer variables just control when we next scan. The scan interval can be calculated by taking one over the scan frequency, which we also do inside on validate just in case we change the frequency in the inspector. We subtract the time.delta time from the scan timer each frame, and if that scan timer is less than zero, then we just increment the scan timer by our scan interval. Finally, we call a function called scan, which we'll define right now. To start with, I'm just gonna get all of the objects around the agent using physics.overlapsphere, passing in the agent's transform, the sensor's distance as the radius, and also the colliders array, because this is the non-allocating version of this function. Adding some debug draw here, we can visualize the overlap sphere check and the objects which it found. So here I'm just drawing a wire sphere for the uh, the entire overlap check using the sensor's distance as the radius again. And the non-allocating version returns the count, which is the number of objects it actually found and wrote into the colliders array. So we need to use that count when we render each position of the collider. Now when I drag a pickup into the sphere, and set the layer mask on the sensor to pick up. We can now see a sphere is drawn at the uh, pickup's position. So now it's time to actually store a list of objects that are within the sensor. So that colliders buffer that we have here, this is storing the objects that are within the radius of the agent, but we need to filter that down to just the objects that are within the center. So create a new list of game objects. This is gonna store the objects that are actually within the sensor's bounds rather than just within that radius. Now create a public function called isInsight, and for now we'll just return true, uh, which takes a game object as a parameter. The count variable here, returned from the overlap sphere function, just returns the number of objects that are wrote into the colliders array, so uh, we just know how many of those objects are valid. So we just loop over the colliders array using that count variable, and just check if uh, each of the game objects in that array uh, is in sight, and if it is, we're gonna add it to our objects list. And just to note, I'm clearing the objects list before uh, before doing this loop each time. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit more debugging information, and this time we're gonna print out the, uh, basically draw a sphere at the position of each object in the objects array this time, rather than the colliders array. And I'm gonna set that to green, because that will basically represent the objects that are within the bounds of of the, sen of the sensor. Cool, and you can see the pickup is now turning green. Uh, that's mainly just because our is in sight function is just returning true every time. Back in the AI sensor script, we can uh, fill in the is in sight function now to actually uh, do some proper bounds checking. So the first thing I'm gonna check is just if the uh, the object is within the height of the sensor. And we can do this just by checking if the direction to the object from the sensor's origin is, uh, is greater than uh, the height of the sensor or it's less than zero. Switching to side view here, we can just verify that the pickup turns green when it's inside the bounds of the sensor. 
So now the next thing to fix is just checking if it is actually within that angle radius there. First thing to do is just zero out the Y value. Uh, this just ensures that the angle that we're calculating is completely horizontal and no vertical element is taken into account. So we can just calculate the angle between the forward axis of the agent and the direction to the, uh, the pickup in this case, and just check if that angle is greater than the angle for our sensor. We can already see it's gone red when it's outside the sensor and now green when it is within the sensor. Awesome. And the final thing to do is really just check if, uh, if there is an object in the way of the agent and the uh, object that's in the sensor, we also wanna disregard that. In this case, we need to do a raycast. So I'm gonna create a new layer mask called occlusion layers, which just specifies which layers occlude the object or act as blockers basically. So I'm gonna shift the origin and the destination points up by half height. And that's just so the ray is cast from the center of the wedge. I'm gonna use physics.linecast passing in the occlusion layers. If it found something, then just return false. So just testing this out, um, it's not currently working just because I need to set the occlusion layers to default. And now when I move the object in and out, uh, the pickup correctly turns green and red. Cool, so now it's time to actually integrate this sensor into our agent. So I'm just gonna add the AI sensor to the AI agent script, just so our states can get an access to the sensor. So the find pickup state needs to be completely rewritten uh, because previously it was just sort of using find object with type and it just kind of knew where the pickups were in the world. So this time I'm gonna create a variable called pickup and just initialize that to null when we enter the state and just check if, uh, if the agent doesn't have a pickup then it's going to call a function called find pickup. This function is just going to look at the sensor on the agent and just check if there are any objects there and if there is an object, it's just gonna return the first one. And finally just call that function inside uh, the update loop. So now once the agent has found a pickup, um, we need to collect the pickup. So I'm gonna make a new function called collect pickup, passing in the pickup to collect. And here we just set the agent's nav mesh uh, destination position to be the pickup uh, transform position. So if find pickup returned a pickup, then we just need to call that a collect pickup function. Now I'm gonna move the pickup outside the range of the sensor and in play mode, just gonna move the pickup inside the sensor. Uh, okay, cool, so it works, but there is a crash. And the reason for that crash is because the pickup has been deleted, but we're still accessing it inside the debug drawer. So I'm just gonna get rid of that for now because we don't need it anymore. But there's another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create, um, convert this objects list into a private uh, variable and then convert the main property just into a public property and just gonna return the private list here. But first I'm actually gonna remove all of the null objects and you can just do this using remove all uh, using that predicate there. And just switch over the scan function to use the, the private uh, version of the objects. So testing this out, the moving the pickup into the, um, into the sensor, the agent collects it and there's no more crash. If the agent can't see a pickup, it doesn't really know where to go. So I'm just gonna create a random script that generates random points within a world bounds um, and just have the agent kind of wander around until it finds a, a pickup to collect. So to do this, I'm just gonna um, create a world bound script with a max and min uh, sort of transform properties, which I'm gonna use as sub objects of the arena and assign them uh, to the world bound script. This is just like a really simple way to generate random positions within uh, the size of your game world. Um, I think something more sophisticated is I'm gonna need like down the road, cause not all uh, sort of worlds are square but for now this is this is okay. So inside the update function, uh, just after we call find pickup, I'm gonna call, like basically create a block called wander. And here we're just gonna check um, if the nav mesh agent doesn't have a path, like if it's not walking anywhere, then I just want it to walk somewhere random. So here I'm just gonna get the world bounds just using uh, game object dot find object of type and uh, just basically generate a random point between the min and max values uh, of the world bounds. So here we just get the min and max uh, properties from the world bounds. 
and then we can uh, generate a random position uh, just using random dot, uh, random dot range for each of the uh, components on the vectors. So for the, the X, the Y and the Z. And finally, just set the nav mesh agents uh, destination to the random position. So now testing this out, uh, I'm just going to enable the path for the debug nav mesh agent, just so I can see like where the agent is trying to go. Um, and it looks like it's, yeah, so it's now correctly wandering around in the world, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm wanting it to basically uh, to find a pickup, but um, it kind of has to get somewhere near a pickup. And once once the pickup becomes within the range of the sensor, it should turn green and the agent should collect it. Yay. Okay, so it actually found two at once and then it manages to, to kill the player. Amazing. <laughs> The attack player state is not using the sensor just yet. Um, it's only the fine weapon state that is currently using the sensor. So there is still a bug at the moment where if the player, uh, if there's an object between the player and the agent, the agent will try to attack the player, like you, you can see here. Um, we can fix this pretty easily um, just by checking if the player is in sight. So I'm just gonna get rid of the set firing uh, calls inside the attack player state and create a function called update firing. And in this function, all we're going to do is just check if the agent sensor, uh, just call the is in sight function, passing in the player transform. If it is, then we set the weapons firing to true. If it's not, then set it to false. So yeah, pretty simple. The agent still knows exactly where the player is and will walk straight to it. And I'll address this in a future video, but for now, at least the agent doesn't try to shoot the player through walls, which we can see working here. The final function to implement is like a filtering function for the sensor. If I have multiple layers selected here, like pickup and character, the agent doesn't really know which type of object is looking at, whether it's a pickup or a character, for example. So looking at our find pickup function again, we can see that it's just returning the first object in this object's array, and that could either be a character or a pickup. And in this case, we only are interested in pickups. In the AI sensor script, I'm gonna create a new function called filter, and this is gonna return the number of objects on a given layer inside the objects list and write them into the buffer. First, we just need to convert the layer name into an integer using layer mask dot name to layer. And we need to keep track of the number of objects that we found while we loop over the objects list. So here we just check if the objects layer matches the layer that we calculated then we basically write the object into the buffer, incrementing the count as we go. If the buffer length is equal to the count, we know that we've filled the buffer and we have to return. Finally, we can just return the number of objects we found. Back in the find weapon state, we can now utilize this function to find the pickups that were within the sensor. So here I'm just allocating a buffer of size one just because I was taking the first object. If you were interested in multiple pickups and wanted to take the most central one, for example, then that buffer would need to be larger. So here I'm just using the filter function, passing in the pickup as the layer name, just adjusting the count there. And instead we return the first object in that pickups buffer that we allocated. So testing this out is a little bit convoluted. The sensor has got both the character and the pickup layers set. So the sensor is seeing all objects on both the pickup and the character layer. But because we're filtering out only pickup objects inside the fine weapon state, then if I move this pickup onto the character layer, the agent will no longer see it, even though the sensor will. And if I move the pickup back into the pickup layer, now the agent correctly sees the pickup. Cool. And that's it for this video. If you made it to the end, then uh, amazing, thank you. Here's your reward, psychedelic pizza slices. We'll see you in the next one. Kaikite.